Hi, this is Charlie Matotiello with another How to Make and How to Play the Native American Flute video series. This time we're going to work on tuning flutes. It's a question that actually one of my subscribers sent in a while back and asked if we would go ahead and make a video on it. And although I've got several other videos in line that we want to make, and one very special and very significant one that's like the history of flutes, which would be great, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this one here now so that we can kind of get that under our belt. Anyway, what we're going to be working on today is tuning flutes, um, both to 440A European style and tuning them to themselves the way that Native American people originally did. If you hear, we've got some background music we always listen to in the shop out here, usually listen to Jamiroquai, for a lot of different reasons. One reason is because he is one of our favorite musicians, of course, and we, uh, we like to listen to him. But another reason is it's a, uh, a style of music that he plays is, is funk, it's called. And funk actually has a lot of blues in it. and uh, most of the music is minor pentatonic, which means, or at least minor, or blues, you know, blues pentatonic scale. Uh, and then we have uh, our flutes that are all traditionally already in minor pentatonic scale. So it kind of works out together. It keeps my ears really clear to, uh, to listening. But we also have a tuner that I use, and it's a free download. I think they've changed their name recently, but the one that I have is called, funny enough, G-String Tuner. I don't know why they come up with these names. But the app was free, and uh, if you can see it too good, I'll bring it up to the camera there. Let's see if you can see some of what it looks like. It's just basically a, you know, A through G, and and uh, has a little meter goes back and forth. You can click on tune different um, notes, and it'll tune those. You can slide it back and forth, and specifically go to the one note or the other. Um, but I usually put it on tune auto, and then just. Uh, find my notes I'm looking for to make sure that they're close or right. I mean, depends on the customer, too. Some people want a traditionally tuned instrument, which this thing doesn't even get looked at, and some people want an instrument that will play, you know, with the London Philharmonic, I guess. I don't know. But uh, but anyway, so I use this tuner a lot when we're requested to tune a flute, so I'm going to be using it in just a moment. And uh, mentioning the kind of music, I've actually sit and played with a lot of the funk, like, uh, like Jamiroquai's music and several other people's uh, music like that. Uh, one of my good buddies, actually the owner of Emergence Records out in Australia, Paul, hi Paul, <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's his specialty. He's really good at it and we play, you know, we have an upcoming album, we play uh, together, him, and Trevor and Sean and, you know, Ron and of course Olivia, you can't forget her, but, uh, but anyway all the guys out at Emergence Records, but uh, anyway, so this is one of our flutes that I picked up. It was in my To Be Completed box, and um, I've already done a little something to it that I'll show you, but I created a plug. This is something I learned from some of our South American cousins type of, of flutes that they make. The uh, kinnas that they make actually use the link in the bottom of the flute, whereas we use the link up here. They leave it in the bottom of the flute, and they use it to, uh, to tune the flute. So they kind of slowly and gradually uh, graduate the size until it hits the key they're looking for, I guess, and then uh, they use it to, to create the flute. Sometimes the back pressure of putting a plug inside of the flute causes the other holes to do something weird. If you notice, there's a great distance between here and there and a very short distance from here and there. Sometimes I do, I put the plug in there because I cut a flute too short and I don't want to go back and make the holes too high pitched. We'll get to talking about that in just a minute. But sometimes I put the plug in it so that I can create a shorter flute that's a really low tone. Um, and yeah, you can make a short, low tone flute that way. But still, it's kind of tricky when you get to, to working with those back pressures and the wind currents in there. This guy, I'll play it for you. And those notes sound great, but the bottom note's a little bit too, too sharp. And it was actually intended to be about this long of course, cut it off, hoping to make it a shorter, low-tone flute, and I put the plug in it, and the plug's doing its job. I actually, a few minutes ago, cut off this end of the plug a little bit to uh, to make it a little shorter because there was too much back pressure. It wouldn't play the, you know, long story short, what we're going to do is retune these holes right now. So if the bottom of the flute, all holes covered, which is the length of the tube from here to there, completely closed, if that note is too sharp to be in the same key of the rest of the holes, what we need to do is to make the rest of the holes more sharp. I'm trying to put this stuff in layman's terms and uh, want to make sure that you, you grasp what it is that we're doing. All holes covered, the note is a little higher than what it should be to be in tune with these other other uh, holes, other fingerings. 
So what I'm going to do is make the other fingering slightly larger, which will make them a little more sharp, which will bring them in tune with the bottom hole. Very similar process that we do with uh, all of our flutes that are requested to be tuned. And of course, like everything, I'm going to use fire. One word of warning, please be careful using fire. Um, I, as you may have noticed, have an outside workshop. My dad had an outside workshop. I think my granddad had an outside workshop. I remember seeing it when I was a little kid. Um, my dad and my granddad didn't make a whole lot of flutes. My granddad, I told you about the flute, and we got a video of making the one that he taught me. But they made a lot of boxes and a lot of other things. My dad made all kinds of stuff. Everything from swing sets to red cedar flower pots to you name it. Um, my sketching box is actually made out of uh, one of his previous boxes. So, kind of cool. But anyway, um, having said this, even an outside workshop is prone to fire problems. Uh, so you got to be careful about this. When you're using a metal rod like I do to heat up, a lot of times it has some carbon built up on the end of it. And the carbon will go pop, 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 and they'll fly off everywhere. Get in your face if you're not careful. When they land on the ground, if there's a lot of wood shavings there, it could catch a fire. On another note, my dad used to make things out of cypress knees, and uh, they were they were really cool. We I remember peeling them as a kid, and the smell and the heat, and oh gosh, it was just a lot of work. But anyway, um, the uh, thing that he did though was he had a brush wheel outside that he cleaned the cypress knees with, and as he cleaned these cypress knees, the cypress shavings would go everywhere, and two or three days would go by, they'd dry out, and no fire out there. My dad was a smoker, but he wasn't smoking out there. And no fire anything. In, in the bright sunlight, these guys would catch a fire. So, um, know your materials. Know what you're working with. Please be safe. Be very safe. Cut fingers off. Got scars. Dislocated and messed up some things. I tell you what, just be careful. All that wasting time, my rod's gotten hot. So, once again, I'm burning... this hole a little larger to make it in tune with the bottom note. So let's see how that sounds. That actually sounds like it's right. Let's see about the rest of the notes. So the other, other notes are kind of still out of tune. The bottom note and the first fingering hole are actually in tune now. taken quarter inch holes, used my 5 16 burning tool, and made these holes about 3 8 of an inch in diameter by slowly burning them around in a circle. Bottom three notes are right. That one's way flat. Some of you look at the size of the holes and think, wow, those are larger than the holes on my flutes that are bought from here that I've seen you make. Um, typically, I don't like to make big holes. Usually, I put the fingerings where I think they belong and pretty much go with it. But um, there is one very good professional flute maker that I've seen his flutes um, who, uh, I mean, these things are $700, $800 flutes. I'm not even sure if he's still around. He may have quit by now. But... Uh, he makes his holes starting off at three eighths, and then the last ones are half. And some of them I've seen, seen some that were five eighths in diameter. Some flute makers do this on purpose because, of course, they tune theirs to European scales more often than I would like to. Um, and in doing so, they found that the larger holes release more sound, more air, and allow the note to be more in tune and louder at the same time. So there's a big benefit of making large versus small holes. A little word of advice while we're working on this. If you're using fire like I do, one other word of warning, if, it's a, if it doesn't fit, be patient. Um, you've always heard the phrase, if it doesn't fit, force it. <laughs> In this case, if it doesn't fit, be patient. There are alternate methods of, uh, of making the holes larger. One of them being using a Dremel with a fine bit. Uh, another one being using sandpaper. As a kid growing up, I used a, a knife and just went back and forth for a long time. Um, let's see, the burning tools, the one I like to use, graduated drill bit sizes, of course, an obvious 
answer, but uh, the fire is the one I like to use for a lot of reasons we've discussed before. It cauterizes the wood, it hardens it, make, it makes a nice color, burns all the scar tissue out from the inside. So. That one's in tune. It's, that one's way, way flat again. You'll find too that everything follows some type of order, some type of pattern. If your bottom holes are a quarter of an inch, generally the next one are going to be five sixteenths on a large bore flute. That's anything about an inch in diameter and larger. Um, if your bottom holes are five sixteenths, your next holes are going to be three eighths, and it works like that. Almost graduated with the uh, old English standard system of measure, and uh, I guess it's a miracle. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, that's what uh, what sizes we usually use. Sometimes. Um, I'll make a, uh, a flute and they'll all be a quarter of an inch, but that's usually with a smaller diameter. Hey, listen to that. That one's perfect. Pop notes too flat. One little secret I'm not telling you that I really need to make sure I point out is that as you know, the flute, the sound here of the flute is determined by the length between the sound hole and the note fingerings, you know, the note hole. So if you can imagine, this fingering was too far south, you know, it was too flat because of that, because the low, lower note, too flat, too far south. What I've done effectively when I'm rounding it out, I'm not moving the bottom of the hole any, I'm moving the top of the hole, I'm moving it upward. Uh, this cuts a lot of the guesswork out of it when you're tuning a flute. Likewise, um, there's another thing we can do up here, which I'll show you in just a moment on another flute. I think I've got one that needs that. The top uh, of the block here, the, I guess, surface of the block that meets the edge of the knife hole there, actually can change and lower the sound, the tone of the flute, by a half and a whole step if you want it to. Uh, it can't really sharpen it a whole lot, but it can make it flatter. So that's a good. And just for giggles, I'm going to check and see what key this thing's in. Turn my fire down a little bit. We probably won't be using that burning rod for a moment. E-flat, almost perfect. I make a lot of E-flat flutes for some reason. Um, people request them, I mean. So this guy here's an E-flat, and it's within 15 cents, which is perfect by most flute makers' standards. Um, when I have, I have a few customers that request specifically concert tune flutes, and of course they're right on the money, but that's with me playing and with them playing. I'm hoping that they keep them right on the money too. But anyway, so that's one. That is an E-flat flute. Let's see, we're gonna skip this guy just to save time and go to this one. This one is one that we have almost completely ready. You'll notice the material is kind of neat. It's shaped odd. Um, but this is a piece of sawgrass like we make our mini flutes out of. These tiny little guys. Uh, this piece of sawgrass is a big one though. and We've got a couple of sites where we go and, and cut the big sawgrass to make them nice. We really like these a lot. Traditional southeastern material. Uh, but anyway, that bottom note's a little on the, on the flat side. And the reason is, let me see, I'm going to grab my drill, but I haven't told you why. Um, there's a restriction inside of here. It's not closed off any anymore, but it is still restricted. It's a lot smaller than it needs to be. So, fortunately, it's short enough that my Forstner bit, I think, will fit right inside of it. Which it did quite a bit. I may have to make my Forstner bit a little bit longer. Okay. So that's got that one. Lots of debris. Top note's a little bit on the sharp side, although that's a really good flute. Let me try one more time. So all notes are in the key of A, except for this hole up here is just a little bit on the sharp side. 
So, once again, one that I don't really care if it's tuned to uh, European standards or not. I'm going to go ahead and just change the tone of it a tiny bit. And in the meantime, I've got two other flutes. Let's see what keys these guys are in. This one's actually in the key of B flat. Not that I care. Once again, this is one of my traditionally tuned flutes. But just to give any of you an idea of what we're working with here, the bottom note is a little too flat. I mean, you can hear it. That bottom note's just a hair too flat. So what I'm going to do shorten it a little bit. Take out my debris. And I got that bottom note in tune, so I made it sharper. We're going to let this rod heat up, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so that pesky rod's finally heated up. Uh, any of you that know me know that it doesn't take that long for a rod to heat up. We just had to take a break for a second. <laughs> but anyway, so what we're going to do next, since we've got the bottom unrestricted, this top note is a little bit on the sharp side, and instead of going back and filling it or plugging it with something and changing the size of it, I'm going to change the size of these other holes to compensate. So what we have, top note, is a little bit on the sharp side. What we're going to do to compensate for that, this top note, all holes in covered, is too sharp. And instead of making it smaller and putting it into the key of A, you know, like some people might request me to do, what I'm going to do is enlarge in these holes just a little bit until they are in tune with it. And if you can see, we've actually done that once already. So these are smaller than these holes here. Not by a whole lot. As with some of our other tuning techniques, in this one's case, a little dab will do you. You don't want to enlarge these holes too much because it'll throw this hole way out. But typically, as long as we have our restrictions and our flows right, sounds like the bottom hole or bottom note's just a little too long, so I'm going to sand it off. I know some of you are at home thinking, or at work, or wherever you watch your videos, cell phone maybe, um, you're thinking, gosh, he's zipping right through this. I wish he'd slow down a little bit and show me how to tune a flute. Um, you know, 25 years, actually 26 years this year of making flutes, and uh, so much of it I just take for granted these days. Uh, when it comes to tuning them, that's something I've only been doing for like the last 10, 12 years, I think. I had a real good friend request one tuned, and I said, okay, and from then on, I've been tuning them when people request me to. Uh, but, uh, just a tiny bit too sharp still. I explain myself too. The top hole is still a tiny bit too sharp with the scale, which makes the bottom notes um, actually too flat. I think that's about it. So, what I effectively did, any of those of you at home with your trusty tricorders, is I basically have uh, taken a flute that was in tune for A, except for the top note was a B flat. And what I have effectively done is tuned the rest of the flute to that top note, making it a B flat flute. Uh, in layman's terms, everything was perfectly in tune except for this top hole. The other notes were too, too flat, so I made them sharper. Made them slightly higher in pitch. And I think...
think that's got that one. The next one we're going to look at, let's see, is this one here that I plan on tuning to the Kia Vey. Um, it's not one for a customer, it's just for demonstration purposes. When I started, before I made this flute, I used my A pattern flute, and I made the holes accordingly. And then I originally selected a piece of material that was the right size and diameter. And what I've got to do now is get the hole size correct and the length of the flute correct to put it in the key of A. Helps if you turn the tuner on. It says it's a flat A flat right now, which means I need to cut off a little bit. I may have mentioned this in another video too, but typically on a flute that has an inside diameter of between three quarters and an inch and a quarter, typically if we're trying to make something a half step higher, we'll cut off a half inch. A whole step is usually about an inch. I don't know why it works out that way. It's kind of neat. I mean, I, I do know why, but, you know, on the layman's side, I can't explain it. On the mathematics side, yeah, you know, there's a reason why the vibrations are a certain size and wiggle their way through the flute, but that's not the fun part. Now it's a sharp A flat. It's about 30 cents off of being A. I was going to clean that scar tissue out of the end. cents off. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it one more time. Let's see. 448. Everything's just a little flat now, so instead of using this rod I've been heating up all this time, I'm going to use the next size up. These holes were originally drilled out at 3 16 I burnt them out to 19 30 seconds, and now I'm going to burn the bottom one to a quarter of an inch, um, which will bring it a little bit more in tune. I think we are... We're about 20 cents off, maybe 30 cents off of 448. For our next note, we're enlarging a hole from 1930 seconds to about a quarter of an inch. And that's 440 on the C. Each time I'm doing this, all I'm doing is enlarging the hole slightly. Start off with a pattern flute, one that I knew was in a key of A. I marked my holes. I chose a piece of river cane that was the right size and diameter to match my pattern flute, mostly. 
I uh, cut the bottom of it off first. Always tune from the bottom first. Cut it off until it got to 440A. Then I'm tuning the next notes, which is a C. It's already 440A from burning out to a quarter of an inch. Our D is really close, but I'm going to go back in it one more time. Just barely burn the inside out. Three cents south. There we go. That's got to be it. On the money. Ten cents off. Any of you laymen wonder what I'm talking about? How many cents? That's actually a unit of measure of uh, tuning when you're talking about tuning something to a European 440A. Um, the cents are usually, you know, just a small graduation, one size or the other. Ten cents is acceptable in concert, you know, music, but I usually like to put mine right on the money. There's an E that is just three cents shy. Once again, traditionally Native American flutes weren't tuned to keys. Traditionally, most of them were high-pitched flutes. So most people don't like to hear that. I always think that low-tone flutes are what you know original flutes were like. Uh, it's not true with our flutes. It's not like that. Ten cents off. I think the sound of my fire might be going a little bit into the mix here. Now my A is a little bit on the sharp side, and I think it's because I may have taken a little bit too much out for the G. This right here is the secret to keeping things in tune. Super glue is a permanent um, bonding material. This is a generic brand. I don't use any specific brand of super glue. Um, but when we're talking about this size and diameter flute, usually the difference between being perfectly in tune and being 10 cents out is the size and diameter of maybe a half the thickness of a piece of paper. So what I just did is put it exactly in tune. That's just amazing. Um, one other thing that super glue is good for, I like to use it up here on the track area on the sound edge. It actually hardens it. And with river cane, if you dry that area out too much, it may crack. So we usually use it on the inside. Even if you don't see it on the outside, we usually have it on the inside of all of them to uh, waterproof them. It soaks in there and makes it hard, too. So it's kind of nice. Um, but just regular old cheap super glue. This is Permatex brand. I think I bought it at Walmart or something. Um, Top note's still a little bit on the sharp side, so we're going to use just a tiny bit. Just a covering on the inside here. Still a little sharp. Now you're wondering probably, what would you do if this note was a lot sharp? Well, number one, go back and rethink your pattern flute. Is there something you did differently? Did you uh, use a piece of material that was too big in diameter? Did you uh, misplace this hole by accident? Could be a number of things that caused it to happen. But uh, typically speaking, if it's a lot off, what I like to do, and it's, it's really beautiful, it's something that a lot of flute makers do. I don't want to give away everybody's secrets, but it's something that a lot of flute makers do 
and uh, I think it's it's excellent. I did it so many times that I decided to make kind of a, a habit of it. I'll get this flute here to show you, but but uh, I'll go back and I'll redraw all the holes. I'll offset it so that in my mind I know the center of the hole is exactly where it needs to be. If it was going too sharp, I'll put it down a little bit. If it was going too flat, I'll move it up a little bit so that the center of the hole is in the exact right place and then draw the rest of them out so that their center is in the right place. And then like this pretty cedar flute has some river cane inlays inside of it. That's how you make them in tune. I mean, all we did is effectively move the hole just a smidgen and then we went back and put another piece of material on this one I did on purpose because it makes it look pretty. It gives you nice fingerings. Uh, this is a flute actually for my cousin. I've been meaning to send him for a long time. Sorry, Jason. But uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> this has got these river cane inlays, which I think look really pretty. It makes it stand out on that red flute a lot. And likewise, you can do the same thing on the river cane. You can, I used to use red cedar inlays on river cane to make them look really pretty. But uh, let's see. Wow, that is incredibly close on the money there. Might take a second for our super glue to dry, but we've got a scale that is exactly 440A. No visible signs of of uh, super glue or anything like that. Like I say, this is just a a way to uh, restrict the air passage through those holes just a little bit, a tiny little bit. I had mentioned too about using the different size blocks and different shaped blocks. This is just a generic block we leave on our work table. It might get sent off with a flute eventually, but for right now we're using it just to test some flutes. Um, but one thing that I will tell you we can do, I'll go ahead and cut one. If we take a thicker piece of river cane or bamboo or whatever you've got, we take a thicker piece of that and cut a block that is substantially thicker, like this guy, you can see the difference in thickness between these two pieces right there if you get a kind of a view of it if you do that make it fit the size I needed to. I don't know if I can stress enough to be very careful in the workplace. See where my goggles... Whoop, I don't even have my goggles on. Uh-oh. <laughs> I've usually got them up here and I can just reach up and there they are and pretend like I'm wearing them. But, but anyway... I've done here is I've taken one flute block that I know was the right, you know, shape and size for a flute block. It's got a nice little flat edge on it, a little tiny little bevel underneath, and I put one giant bevel on it. You can see the difference between those two. This one goes, and this one is like, so you gotta make those sounds when you do it. But anyway, the uh, that little hood that's over it there will actually change the tone of the flute substantially. Let's see what we've got here. I'm going to go ahead and put this on a tuner. Now one day I'm going to give you guys a view of my tuner and everything at the same time, but right now you have to take my word for it. That's in the key of A. And this guy with this other block on it is actually almost A flat. I'll show you how we can make it A flat. What I've done now, here's my flat block for reference, here's the other block, I've put a really long shelf on it, a little slope there, and that's going to keep most of the air going down into the flute rather than out of the flute. Put it at the same location, let's see, go forward just a little bit. There's A flat right there. And 
what effectively we have is we're covering most of the sound hole up but at the same time we're pushing the air down into the flute instead of letting more of it come out it's real simple math you know more air lower note less air higher note works the same way here the distance between here and here is a short distance that the air travels um, so it makes a high note you cover this fingering up the distance is now a little bit longer cover this fingering up a little bit longer and so on and so on and the longer the distance it travels or the more air the lower the note so answers a lot of those questions I hope for you and I think we've covered all of our basics we found out how to make it a little sharper by cutting the end off we've put a plug in one to uh, to make it a little bit lower tone we have uh, changed the size of some of the holes a little bit which covers a lot of those and then the uh, the top of this guy here which I see now he's just a little bit of TLC uh, we've changed the size of it let's see here just slightly just by using a, a drop of super glue I mean not even really a whole drop it was about a half a drop of super glue we've restricted the air passage just a little bit and have effectively made a 440A tuned flute and of course if you uh, if you have any other questions about tuning flutes always feel free to email me and in most cases I might have something that I've emailed to other people like a little chart or something a graph or something I can send you I might be posting some more of those on my website soon because um, we get a lot of questions about this, that, and the other. But if you have any other questions about flute making, you know, we're here. We've answered a lot of them. A lot of our last several videos have been specific to people um, requesting, you know, a certain type of video, like our drone video we just made on how to make a Native American drone flute. Um, we'll be making some more drone flute videos here soon when we come and make the, uh, the river cane ones. That's something we're going to do usually when we have a lot more free time. Right now we're doing a lot of shows and festivals. But um, we... Uh, we have several of those kind of videos planned and scheduled, and then we also have more videos on, um, you know, of course, the history of the flute, like I mentioned at the beginning of this one. You know, the history of the flute is something very important. Most people don't have any idea about. Uh, a lot of people have what I like to call romanticized ideas, which are fine. They have their place. A lot of them are based on fact. Um, but, you know, sometimes you keep recoloring the same picture and the crayons are just on top and on top of each other so much that the color is completely different. Uh, but uh, you can change a lot of things about it, but is it still a Native American flute? There's a lot of questions like that that people ask too. So if you have any ideas of a video or uh, have any questions that you want to ask me, feel free to email, contact us through YouTube or through our Facebook page or whatever you like and we'll get back to you ASAP or make a video for it like this one. So. Once again, Charlie Montatuella signing out for how to make and how to play Native American flute video series. Uh, please keep an eye on our next upcoming videos. Like I said, we've got some humdingers coming for you. And uh, definitely feel free to contact us anytime. Website Blue Bear Arts, BlueBearFlutes.com. Uh, and also our Facebook is uh, Blue Bear. Uh, let's see, what is it? What is the name of our Facebook again? Blue Bear Arts. Okay, just had to get the camera person in there for a minute. Anyway, so it's Blue Bear Arts on Facebook. And if you have any questions, like I say, shoot us an email. Check out some of our places we've gone and where I've played. And uh, always, always be very careful and happy flute making. Mm -hmm.